I'm uh, here at uh, the Toronto After Dark Film Festival with uh, Jason and um, Rob, the director and producer of one of Canada's favorite trailers ever, <laughs> Hobo with a Shotgun. And uh, they're here with their latest short, Treevenge. And uh, I guess my first question is to you, uh, got to talk about Hobo. How did that come together? Um, basically, like the idea of it started out, um, me and my buddy um, John Davies, who's like the writer on it, and uh, my buddy Mojo, who uh, at the time was kind of looking like a hobo, and we were sitting at a pizza joint, and uh, we were just spitting out ideas for movies, and my buddy Mojo's like, you guys should make a movie about me. <laughs> and he had just like bought this like toy shotgun, and we were like, and my buddy John, he spit out, well, you got a shotgun, you look like a hobo, why don't we call it Hobo with a Shotgun? And then we just, from there, it just kind of like stuck in our head, and we just kind of threw around the idea a little bit. And, um, when Robert Rodriguez came out with the trailer competition for Grindhouse, um, my buddy John called me up and he was like, dude, we should do something for this. And we kind of were spitting around ideas and we were like, we should do that hobo with a shotgun idea for this thing. And uh, Rob, we uh, pitched it to Rob and Rob was like, yeah, let's just do it. Like, let's just go start shooting tonight. And so like the <laughs> night like we found out about the competition, we went out and started shooting because yeah. they only gave like people like two weeks. Or yeah, so. it was like it was just less than two weeks to shoot it, edit it, and get it sent off and in their offices. So they all came over and we uh, sat in my living room and made a flow chart of like an outline of a movie basically, and we said, okay, we got to shoot all the best parts of the movie, and uh, and we did and, uh, <laughs> in about five days, and then we had to cut it together yeah. and get it to Austin in two weeks so it was uh, it was crazy and stressful but it was fun well yeah. the look at that uh, trailer is like amazingly true to all the like 70s 80s exploitation yeah. trailers did you guys shoot that on film or video and then did a lot of <laughs> yeah we shot it with like the dvx 100 the panasonic camera and uh this is kind of funny like um when we were we wanted to like create that same look i think i can't remember what inspired it i think we saw like what they were well we were, we, we were, did uh we did a short for uh, a burlesque troupe um called pink velvet it was kind of retro yeah and uh jason spent a lot of time editing and he played oddly enough he was playing with film scratches and making it look vintage because you know burlesque vintage and, and, and it was like a template because yeah that like was kind of we didn't see grindhouse or anything or what they were going to be doing with it but it's, it was just kind of uh, meshed because we did it to our trailer too. I mean, yeah, it was just basically um, what I was doing is I was taking like um, digitized film footage mm -hmm. that had like scratches, and they would have like either a white background or a black black background, mm -hmm. and I would luma key out those backgrounds and keep the scratches. But then also with like my contrast and color correction, like make the like the video pulsate like through the video. And it was kind of funny because um, when uh, People were asking Rodriguez and those guys like how they did it for Grindhouse. So he made it kind of like a secret. They were like, "Oh, we can't really tell you. It's a secret." <laughs> and then like when we went to Troublemaker Studios and hung out with those guys and hung out with the editor, someone came around the corner there who hadn't seen Hobo and was like, "Hey, you guys should like totally Grindhouse these guys' trailer up." And they're like, "No, there's no reason to. They did it the exact same way we did it." That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was pretty funny. So, it was a lot of labor and uh, full throttles staying up. Doing that. Yeah, it's very a lot of fun to shoot that though. Oh man, like we knew, like I think like the first day shooting with Dave Brunt, who plays a hobo, <laughs> like we would give him lines and he would just take those lines and just like bring so much life to it. And we were like, we were laughing or at like there were so many takes so ruined because we were laughing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we just knew we were like, man, there's something kind of special about this, especially Dave Brown. There was like something special about that guy on screen. He kind of like brought this like presence to the screen that like I hadn't kind of seen before. Yeah, like so. the people's response to him was insane, like comparing him to Paul Newman. Like that was a, the biggest comparison of the, our, our, the Hobo with Shotgun <laughs> is Paul Newman. I'm just like, how the fuck is, I mean, he's got blue, crazy blue eyes or whatnot, but it's just like, there he is, Paul Newman, Hobo with a Shotgun. <laughs> so there's been a lot of talk, Hobo is becoming a feature film as we speak. Yeah, that's what we're working we're on right in now. The, we're trying to get our financing in place. We're partnered up with uh, Neve Fickman from uh, Rhombus Media here in Toronto. And uh, he's uh, helping us, and Rhombus is helping us get uh, stuff together to, you know, 
get our financing in place and hopefully start so, shooting in the new year. Do you have a screenplay, like a full screenplay written oh, for it? Oh, then? yeah, okay. it's been gone through drafts like all year. We've been that's, working on that's it. That's probably pretty awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we're pretty stoked on it right now. Like it's like it's where it's finally at a point where I think we all. I mean, it's obviously we're still tweaking it, but <laughs> it's at a point now where I think we all feel pretty good about it. The three of us, like the creative team, Jason, John, I'll give you Davies, a tagline. It'll be like the death wish for the new millennium. <laughs> <laughs> well, death wish is uh, you know obviously an inspiration. Oh yeah, big uh, time. You know, huge. I think we should uh, talk about Treevenge now. So. This is your, uh, I guess, official... No, you guys have done other short films, right? We have, but this is kind of like the... Especially, like... Like, I've been making films since, like, high school, but I never, like, really put any of my film work out there other mm -hmm. than there's a film festival back home called the Atlantic Film Festival. Right. And I've thrown a couple little things, like, at them for them to play, but I've never sent anything out really to the world other than Hobo with a Shotgun. So Tree Vantage was kind of... We made it, and we were like... Even when we were thinking about making... Um, Treevenge, it was like, I remember talking to Adam uh, last year when all the hobo stuff was going on. He was like, dude, man, you, sh you gotta make a short, like, I'd love to play it, like, and so that was kind of one of the inspirations was uh, knowing that there was so many people out there who were supporting us and we thought, well, wanting us to do something, you know, yeah. it, was, it felt good coming from uh, festival organizers like uh, Mitch at Fantasia and Adam at After Dark and there, you know, all these people, like genre people were like, you guys all right, you did Hobo, let's fucking see what you're going to do next. So we had a challenge and we knew we had to do something that was going to, uh, you know, hopefully get the same kind of accolades or surpass. And also, you know, I work in the film, in, in the film industry at home and Jason um, kind of had worked outside of it mainly, like doing his own thing. And I, I really wanted to, uh, I wanted to give him the experience um, of making like a movie more like the real way, like you do it. Yeah, um, true. Like, like this is the first time he ever didn't actually shoot a movie, and he got to sit behind a monitor. We got to sit beside each other and say, "Here yeah. we are. Guess what? We're fucking watching this, and you don't have to be. I don't have to fall around you looking in your viewfinder." You know, yeah, so. like because I usually shoot everything that that I do, and so this is the first time. Because I knew like for the hobo feature that I wanted to give the camera up to someone who is even more passionate about the camera than. I am, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a little testing grounds, I guess, for me to like work let with other camera. Yeah, just kind of let it go and learn really how to direct camera. And even like the first couple days, I got to admit, like that was really tough. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I see Jason in the corner kind of doing this. Yeah, because you're used to hands-on. You're doing it, right? Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then to sit back and then, well, David Fincher, I read this recently, he said directing is, uh, you're a painter and there's like a giant canvas that's 80 feet away and you're there with a megaphone going, you know, I, I need blue there. No, yeah. darker blue. Darker blue. That's what he described directing as. Yeah, yeah like, it was interesting, too, like, because there'd be times where... Because I usually when I am shooting a movie, like, I'm right there to, like, direct actors or, you know, if I got to, like, move something or whatever, I'm right there to do it. But this was, like, learning how to kind of direct behind a monitor as well, too, is, like, I remember there was times where Rob grabbed me, like, nope, stay here, tell them what you want. <laughs> Yeah. It's awesome. So yeah, like Tree Vengeance was like a huge, huge learning experience for me. It was yeah. awesome. No, and it was good. I mean, it, you know, it was a lot of fun. A lot more stressful than Hobo because there was just more on the table and well, more yeah, people. Well, yeah, a lot of pressure, a lot of people expecting what's next from you guys, and then you guys are going to put pressure on yourselves, right? Yeah. But we good. still had a lot of fun. And, you know, oh yeah, we had a blast. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, laughed, laughed our asses off. Like, I'll never forget that day we were shooting at the tree lot. <laughs> we bought off those guys with a bottle of rum. That was like, we got that location. I don't know if you see, see it, but the, when you see it, there's a location. It's a tree farm, and it's crazy, like, production value. Awesome. Just, and it was just, all paid really, for with a bottle of rum. That yeah. was it, man. <laughs> like a Peckinpah story. <laughs>